Hello everyone, this is Vipin. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the second video in the test bench series. And uh, in the first one, we wrote a test bench for an AND gate. Right? And we tested and uh, it was all working well. But that was a very simple one. Let's now try to do a bit more complicated. So what we are going to do in this video is to convert this AND gate code into a cloaked version of it. Basically, we will do the AND operation at the positive edge of the clock cycle. Alright, so we will convert that and also we will change the already existing test bench code which is this into uh, include this uh, clock functionality, right, like generating the clock, etc, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Start by creating new source, VHDL module, let's name it and gate clocked. Next, next, finish. Okay, so I'm just going to copy paste this code into this, change the name like this okay so we have two inputs and one output a b and c let's uh, introduce one more input which is clock input and standard logic type right and uh, inside the begin statement we have we will have a process with the sensitivity list clock the begin of the process statement and an if statement and we can write rising edge of clock then do this operation c is equal to and b and if and process all right that's it pretty simple so rising edge means uh, when the clock is rising from 0 to 1 this operation will be performed you have even the opposite uh, of rising edge falling edge but we will just stick with rising edge in this uh, in this tutorial right so we have the code ready now let's uh, go ahead and uh, create a test bench code okay so new source VHDL module TB underscore and get clocked. Okay, next, next, finish. So this is the code which we have from our uh, first uh, video, first session. So let's copy this and paste it here. So, most of the things remain the same, just that like, for example, this thing could be changed, change the name here, or like easiest way is to just copy from here and until this, control C and just replace it just like this only so that we don't accidentally miss anything okay so we have the signals here we have clock so let's declare that here signal clock standard logic as well so now we need to declare one more variable one more constant uh, which is the period of the clock so that we don't hard code uh, the frequency of the clock so what we can do is constant which is a keyword and clock period of time type let's say 100 nanosecond which is like uh, 10 megahertz frequency okay so now we need to generate the clock 
like uh, we have the clock period we have the clock signal so this clock signal has to uh, toggle between 0 and 1 right with uh, this frequency so there are two ways you can do this either with a process statement or with uh, just a one liner okay let's try both of them and you can use whatever you like okay so clock process process begin so what you could do is clock is 1 and then wait for clock period by 2 okay so half of the clock period we uh, set the value as 1 and then again clock is equal to 0 and wait for clock period by 2 and then we end the process symbol so when we do like this you can see that uh, we set the value 1 wait for half the time then change the value to 0 then wait for half the time and then once this is done it goes back to here and then it goes on right so that is one method another method is uh, pretty simple so you can write like clock is equal to note of clock after clock period divided by 2 so this is really simple comment this for now we will test out both during the simulation phase okay and uh, continue with the rest of the code so we are instantiating this thing uh, one signal is missing which is obviously the clock so let's add that so clock is assigned to the local variable inside the test bench clock a comma there uh, stimulus process remains unchanged there is uh, yeah you don't need to do anything just for fun we can make this 200 all right okay all right let's uh, test this okay one more thing here to change is the name of the component which we are go going to test it's not and gate it's and gate clocked okay let's close this other things behavior check syntax okay seems to be good simulate all right let's zoom out let's put the, yeah so you can see the all the signals in test bench are available here this clock period is not really needed let's remove them remove it so a1 b1 c1 so every rising edge the output should change as per the input so you can see that this all this time uh, there is uh, no change in c1 and at the rising edge which is this 0 to 1 transition you can see that uh, the output c1 changes as per the input a1 and b1 like uh, 0 0 and is 1 and then here again at the next rising edge you can see that uh, 0 1 is again 0 here remains the same remains the same this is also 100 zero, zero. and here you can see that uh, the input b1 changes to 1 and a1 is remains 1 so the obviously the c1 is uh, 1 as well right and that is set right exactly at the uh, positive edge of the clock cycle so we can see that uh, the code our uh, design under test the unit under test is working well and the test bench is also doing its job properly right so now what i would like to do is i want to go back to the test bench code and just comment this part and then uncomment this just to see that if uh, it's uh, working okay right 
So since we didn't add or remove any variables, we can just go to the ICM and relaunch the simulation right from here. No. Okay. So what happened here? So the clock is U, which is uninitialized. So what happened is that in this code, we can see that the clock is assigned its value 1 and 0 like right inside the process. Okay. So it does not matter whether you initialize the value here or not, right? 0 or 1 does not matter. But in this one liner piece of code, we are directly doing a not operation on the clock. So if the clock remains uninitialized, not of clock will also remain in that state. So since you are doing like this, we should definitely um, initialize to 0 or 1. Okay. So let us go ahead with 0 and then relaunch the operation again. Okay. So now it is working. So everything is good. We have a 1, 1, 0 and right here you can see that at the positive edge of the clock the 1 1 becomes 1 the output becomes 1 and you can see that like the inputs have changed already at this stage okay but since it's falling edge uh, the our code doesn't uh, calculate the output at that point right so it waited until the rising edge is rising edge happens okay so i think that's about it in this video hope uh, this video benefited everybody and uh, as usual uh, please uh, like this video if you like the contents of this video and subscribe to my channel in case you want uh, more of such uh, videos in the future all right bye bye